Hey everyone, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to LitCode. In this video, we are going to explore a plugin called Run Protector and also we are going to see how to run our test script in the existing browser using the plugin. First, we have to go to this extension tab and here we have to say Run Protector. And hit enter, this is going to bring you this Run Protector plugin first. So go inside that, click on that and here you can see option called install so just click on that and that's it you are done now close this tab and go to your any existing script so i'm just going to take this inputs and here we have seen that we almost in our every script we are creating this conf.js so that i can specify my spec file name here right instead of that we are going to have a common conf file and we are going to run all our test script using that configuration file so here if i go inside this now here we are able to see options called run test right if i click on this this is going to give me some error says that you do not have that particular file so if you want to use this plugin you have to create a file called protector.conf.js so let me copy this and here please remember in the root of the your project structure or the project folder you have to create a file so i'm just going to click on this new file and i'm going to paste the extension i mean the file name and that's it now I'm getting this um, uh, protector icon or the logo that's because of I'm using this plugin called um, so here we can see we ha I have this file icons called VS code icons that is why I'm getting this red color icon in your case it might be different so that's not a problem that's just an icon right so if I go to this here I have to write our configuration like what is the spec name what is the browser name and everything right so i'm just going to copy this from here this conf.js and uh, i think we should take another one because we are using this uh, babel as well right so i'm just going to copy this and here i'm going to paste everything right that's absolutely fine now here this is going to be optional as of now because whenever we are going to click on this run test this is going to take the spec file name automatically so we no need to worry about this configuration file creating each and every time so that's it let's try to run anything so i'm just going to this window tabs and here i can just click on this run test so it is going to execute my test based on the this describe and the file name so if i maximize call and here we can see it's already started our spec file right so this is very simple and it's very handy but what we will learn apart from this is how we can interact with the existing browser that is opened by the current scenario using this using this plugin so we know that after each and every test scenario our browser gets automatically closed right so we have to stop that first then we can proceed further so what i can do is i can go to my app data folder just go to your run and type app data and here within this roaming and go to your npm and here within this node modules you have to find this folder called protector and here go to your bin and then followed by not the bin sorry so if i go back and here i have to go within this build and driver providers and here we have a file called driver provider.js so right click and open with vs code And here, if you scroll down, maybe around line number 72, 80, you can find an option saying that if session within the safe condition, by default, it will be something like this. So return driver.quit. Just you have to comment that and save the file and just type return zero. That means after each and every session, your browser is not going to close automatically. So that is what we are doing here. Okay. So I repeat from the line number 72, 80 there might be a condition where it says that if session it will be by default return driver.quit but we have to make this as return zero and comment this line over here now let me close this and again you have to do the same thing for your local node modules as well so if you go within this node modules and then you have to find the protector and within this build and then followed by driver providers and then followed by driver provider.js 
Now it is going to be exactly the same scenario. So again, we have to use this session. So we are going to command this one. And here I'm going to say return zero. Why I'm doing this? Because of course, if the browser get closed, then probably we cannot communicate with the browser, right? So we have to make sure that our browser is running in the background so that we can communicate with that using the debugger address. Let us take a test script and we'll see how to use this. So I'm going to take this button spec here. So here we have this import statement and some of the it blocks, right? Now we know that if there is X before the it block, that means it is temporarily disabled, right? So if I do this here, we can see this run test from this place has been disabled. So that is expected as well. So here I'm just going to use this it block. Now I'm going to run this. Okay. So if you see our configuration file here, we have this recur babel for using our import statement. And here we have disabled the Selenium promise manager so that we can use the async and await concept. Now here I'm going to run this. Now if I run this, it is also going to trigger my before all as well. Because by default, we know that before all means, of course, it should run before each and every it block, right? So here my test case has been passed and it says that ran 104, of course, because we ran only one it block. And also here we can see the sysout statement, I mean the console.log statement, I mean the that is go to home, right? So here I have this button which says go to home. So we are retrieving this text using the get attribute, right? So yes, sorry, we are using the get text here, right? So that's it, fine. Now, one thing you have to notice is here, you make sure that your by default in each and every window system, it will be in terms of window PowerShell or the command prompt, but that is not going to work here with this plugin. The reason is very simple. This plugin uses this command called hyphen hyphen grep that is Unix command, right? So of course we cannot use that in our PowerShell or the command prompt. So click on this and you click and you have to click this select default shell and here you have to select this git bash. Then delete this and again open. Now you can see it's going to be bash by default. Now to get this bash, you have to use the git. So you have to go to Google, just type and search for git and then you can install that. So you have to download this and then you have to install. That's going to be very simple. So let's not worry about this. Now we are going to also see how to run our test script in the same existing browser. So here, once I run this, this is going to launch my browser and it is not going to close by default because we have disabled the um, driver.quit in our both the places, right? In our app data node modules and also our project node modules, right? So this is going to be open, right? So we are going to use the debugger address concept to communicate with the existing browser. So for that, of course, I have to get the debugger address first. So here I'm going to say, it can be anywhere, doesn't matter really. So I'm just going to use this before all. Here I have to say log and await and here I am going to say browser dot get capabilities is the function which is going to return as the debugger address. Now I am just going to give control J and again I am going to run this particular test. And here we can see we got some information from the get capabilities, but we are interested on this local host that is the debugger address, right? Now we have to make use of this debugger address in our configuration file. So for that, we are going to declare some values I can say. So here I have to say capabilities. We'll talk about this in detail in our upcoming videos, but as of now, just uh, let us learn how to use the debugger address. So here I have to say capabilities and it is going to accept a object data type and here we have to say the browser name. So browser and then followed by name and this are case sensitive. So make sure you are giving the same value. 
and then followed by we have to use the chrome options so that we can give our debugger address to the chrome and based on that it is going to do the communication so here within this chrome options i have to say debugger address so let me just copy this and paste over here and that's it so we are done with this so this is the configuration it, within this capabilities we have to give the browser name so that is going to be our chrome and using this chrome options we are going to mention the debugger address which is coming from my existing this browser right existing in the sense not your manually opened browser the browser whatever has been opened by your test script that is what i meant by existing script existing browser here so here i'm going to navigate to this spec file and we already know that we have launched our url right so i'm just going to comment this before all and then we are going to run this particular get question right so let me clear my console here and here we can see we are in the first test we are able to get this go to home now we are going to get this portion of this particular button so if i'm going to click on this run test So it is not going to open my actual uh, new browser instead of that it is just going to communicate with the same browser and here we can see we got some portion based on this particular locator right so this is how we can use the debugging as well we already learned how to do the debugging using async and await and also the selenium promise manager in addition to that we can use this as well okay now this is going to be very very handy for example you are uh, executing a um, big script where it's getting failed at some point but you do not want to run it from the again just to save time probably you can use this plugin and the debugger address so that we can communicate with the existing browser each and every time now let me give you some other example as well so if i'm going to run this run test here and this is again going to communicate with the same browser so of course we cannot see the browser is getting launched over here and then we got some rgb color right so exactly we got this color as well now let me run this again as well. So we got this as 38 and 128 that is I think the height and the width of the particular button right. Now if we are going to delete this console here it is going to kill the my browser as well. So if I click on this it is going to kill my browser as well okay so that is expected because that is holding this browser right now just in case if you want to run all the test cases then of course we have to click on this run test here on the top of the described block then it is by default it is going to run each and every eight blocks now also we have discussed uh, the fit right so focus in this particular uh, plugin f focus it block it's not going to work i don't know the reason but that is not working but of course we can use this it block to make our test script run now here if you notice it's saying us some uh, i mean it's not giving us any value because my browser is not able to launch the reason is very simple in our com.js we are saying that this is the debugger address where we want to communicate but actually we have closed that right so of course it is not going to work for sure so let me show you the exception as well okay so we got the exception it says that web driver error unknown error cannot connect to the chrome at this local host particular port number right now this is going to be changed for each and every run so make sure that before using this debugger address or the chrome options just get the debugger address for first time once the browser has been opened just copy the value and paste over here and that's it so in the next run, it might give you another um, debugger address. If you close the session, then again, of course, you have to change the value. That's it. It's going to be very simple, right? So let me just click on this and let me show you that, of course, we can run all the eight blocks using this run test. So as expected, we are getting this browser and then we also got this debugger address. And here, if you see, this time the debugger had address has been changed by 0384 right in our previous scenario it is going to be different so that is expected as well so let's quickly recap first thing we have to go to this extension tab and here you have to search for run protector 
and install this one, right? Then go back to your project root folder and create a conf.js. I mean protected.conf.js. The file name is mandatory here. If you give something else, it is not going to work for sure. Once you do that, within this, you have to give your all the configurations. Now, even if you are using TypeScript, this is going to be exactly same because we know that TypeScript cannot run our, um, I mean, we cannot run our TypeScript file directly, right? Of course, your configuration files needs to be in JavaScript only. We'll talk about that in our TypeScript session. As of now, let us understand that. Here, we have to make sure that whatever the configuration by default you have, you can give it here. And also, if you want to run in your existing browser, you have to make use of this capabilities here. And also, before using this, make sure that you are closing, uh, I mean, you are commenting your driver.quit in this node modules folder as well as in your app data folder. And then we have to just click on anywhere, I mean, this run test, whatever the it block you are going to execute, that is going to bring up our session, I mean, the browser, right? So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this video. If so, give me a like and please add it to your friends. And see you in the next one very soon. Ta-da, bye-bye. Take care.